Hello everybody, welcome back to Chief Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And yeah, <clears throat> it's another day, January 19th, 2020. And I'm a little on the tired side today. I just spent a couple hours on the phone with my cell phone provider. They're gonna send me out a new phone thinking it's the phone that's bad. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's uh, their towers. There's a problem with their tower out here. Anyway, so uh, what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to cover part three of tools that uh, should be added to your list when you're going to go off grid. And uh, I've got a couple of items here that I want to point out. One of them is uh, this thing. It's, it's a post driver and it's a solid pipe. You see on this end, it's, a, it's got a cover on the end and it's got a handle on both sides. And you slip that down over a pipe or a fence post, a metal fence post, and you drive it into the ground. And uh, that just sliding it up and down and slamming on it, that thing weighs probably, oh, I'd say a good uh, 15 pounds. So you get, it's like, like a 16 pound sledge. And uh, it's just easier to, to maneuver and you won't uh, miss the pole and, cause an accident. All right, the other thing is, this is a pickaxe I mentioned yesterday. And you see it's got an ax on one end and it's got a, a pick spade on the other end. And these come in real handy when you're digging around bushes and trees and things like that. So that's another item that you wanna take care of or take along with you. A couple other items uh, th that deserve a mention are um, a come along. And uh, for those of you who don't know what a come along is, it's got a, a, a ratcheting lever handle on it. And then it's got these cables that are going through a pulley sequence. So it's a, it'll pull a lot more than its own weight. So those things are great for pulling uh, stumps and pulling out uh, uh, other things. And you can, you can also use them for uh, lifting heavy items. Mine is inside this container right now. I can't open the door right now, but uh, the, um, it's hanging from the ceiling and I use that to lift off things like heavy table saws and stuff like that right off of my trailer. All right, so that's a, another one. Then uh, of course, um, an honorable mention and something that comes in real handy is if you're going to be running gas pipe for your propane, um, you could try to uh, measure everything and just go and buy um, short nipples and uh, shorter pieces of pipe or have uh, Home Depot cut and thread the pieces for you. Yeah, you can do that if you if you need to. That's a, a lot of extra work and time, especially if you're like me, I have to drive 50 miles round trip to the nearest Home Depot. So <clears throat> 50 miles takes up a, a good section of the day just to get one pipe threaded. It does, it's not worth it to me, but I've owned a couple of uh, pipe threaders I bought it Harbor Freight. I bought the power, uh, powerized one that runs on 120 volts. And I also have the hand threader uh, for those places where you can't get in with power. And uh, those will handle anywhere from half inch iron um, galvanized or black iron pipe all the way up to inch and a half uh, galvanized or black iron pipe. So that makes things a lot easier when you're running your pipes because you can buy some 10 foot lengths more than you need. And then you can cut it yourself and thread it yourself and make the, si the exact sizes you need right on site. Now, um, again, I said you can cut it yourself. So you're gonna need a cut pipe cutter. And uh, those are, another thing I bought at Harbor Freight was the most uh, inexpensive place to buy it. And um, those are for cutting iron pipe. They have um, really large cutter wheels on them. And uh, then you also need a vise of some kind. Uh, you can just get a regular bench vise uh, or whatever, but you need something to hold that pipe while you're threading it. But not if you buy the electric pipe threader. The electric pipe threader comes with its own clamp vise that fits right on the tool, slides over the pipe. You lock it down like a, uh, like a C-clamp lock on it. And uh, then you can hold the pipe right on the machine itself as you're threading it. Okay, so make sure you 
you have something to do your gas pipes with. Uh, another thing that come in handy is, uh, again, I bought it Harbor Freight, is a 12 volt transfer pump. And it garden hose fits on both, both the inlet and the outlet. So you can uh, use shorter garden hoses and, and things like that. It does come with one and it comes with a, uh, a base filter unit that goes in the, uh, in the water if you wanna suck water out of a puddle. So <clears throat> things like that are, are really handy because uh, instead of lifting barrels up to pour them into stuff like that, I can just pump the water up. And I run that off the solar uh, battery that's in the back of my van. So it comes in real handy. Uh, if you don't have uh, that solar setup, you, know, you really should get that because it really does come in handy. Um, somebody, meant, Jim, H, Jim H, I think it was, mentioned that uh, it was amazing that I ran my power tools off of 45 watt solar panels and one battery and a 3000 watt inverter. Well, I did it and I'm still doing it. And that rack right up there on top of the van is the three um, 15 watt solar panels that uh, originally came from Harbor Freight. And I still have that set up in there and I use it all the time. So yeah, that's a, that's a handy thing to have. If you don't have a van, of course, you, you'll have to make some type of a, a rack or you could just uh, uh, make a little stand that you can rest it in the back of your pickup truck when you get to a stopped position. And then uh, you can use that to keep your, your tools running. All right, so let's see, a hand truck and a wheelbarrow. Those are really, really handy things. Um, a hand truck I use for moving the large 100-pound uh, uh, propane tanks around and um, hay bales and things like that. It just always it comes in handy. Uh, moving boxes of wood and things like that uh, around the, the compound or the compound. Yeah, that's a uh, hand truck comes in handy. A wheelbarrow comes in handy. And I put the uh, non-flat tires, the, the ones that don't have tubes in them, they're just solid rubber tires. I bought those at Harbor Freight too. And I changed everything over to those so I don't have to worry about getting flats in those things. The other thing is a garden wagon. And my garden wagon is inside of here right now so I can walk right over to it and show you what I'm talking about. That's another Harbor Freight item. Uh, inexpensive and handy as can be. Moving stuff around, carrying tools from the uh, shop to the van, whatever. Uh, bringing stuff from the, when I go to the store, bringing stuff from the van to the containers or to the shop, uh, unloading chicken feed, things like that. It, that comes in real, oops, excuse me, real handy. And uh, I think I'm going through my list here. I think that pretty much covers um, tools. That was part three of the tools. So let me get uh, a couple other things on there. Now, for, um, let's see who it was. It was uh, Paul Gendron uh, wanted to see me going out and prospecting. Well, uh, I'm not going to do that for a while because I got other things that uh, are being taken care of and some other problems that were involved with the ATV. I, I'll get into that at a later date, but right now uh, we'll just skip over that and... Uh, Oh yeah, Jim H wanted to know about uh, the rapid rod I mentioned about. Uh, that's my invention. I have a U.S. patent on it. And um, I, I mentioned I use that for mixing concrete. And I mentioned I use a um, mix 60 pound bag in 60 seconds or less with that uh, mixer. Well, I told him he wanted to, me to show that. And uh, I think I, I might have one here in the shop, but you can go to my playlist and go to um, Homesteading the Desert uh, the sec second year. And uh, there'll be a video down the line of probably 10 or 20 videos down. It's uh, 8.02 minutes long. And the title of it is Mixing Concrete with a Rapid Rod. So you might wanna check that out. Yeah, I do have some rapid rods here. Okay, this is a, a discontinued size, um, but the, that's only because the shaft on this is only a quarter inch uh, shaft, and this is what we used to call 
the uh, mid-range, but uh, it's the same dimensions as the large five gallon mixer. And that's the one, I, the size I would use for concrete, but it would be this size shaft on it. You see the difference. Okay, so this is the mid-range. This one will handle anything from one to five gallon buckets. And uh, this is one, one of the most popular ones that we had. And uh, this is the mini mixer. And you see it's much smaller. And this is for like quart, quarts of paint, things like that, or small mixing jobs, epoxies, things like that. And you can turn this very slowly in a drill so you don't introduce air bubbles into your epoxies. And uh, I know it's a, it's a one-dimensional device. It doesn't look like it mixes very well, but trust me, put this in a drill motor, you have to start off slow. If you just squeeze the trigger all the way, you're gonna have whatever was in that can all over you and all over the room you're in because it'll throw it all out of the, that, that can in an instant. These things really have great mixing power. The other nice thing about them was they were one dimensional. So they would lay flat in the toolbox or in the bed of your truck. If you put something on top of it, you wouldn't bend it so you could keep on using it. And these are precision balanced. You can spin these things at 17,000 RPM and there's no vibration. Um, and they were made out of 304 stainless steel. So they didn't rust and they lasted forever. That was one of my downfalls is they lasted forever. So people would buy one and they would never have to buy another one. But there are still people out there using them. The, uh, the corporation is uh, closed down now. We no longer manufacture those. And uh, uh, there's only the few that I have left here that uh, I keep on using for myself. And uh, just thought that those deserved an honorable mention. All right, so I'm gonna go inside very quickly uh, because I wanna show you something uh, pretty amazing. Um, it's only been two days since I transplanted all of these plants into uh, pots with uh, uh, potting soil and got everything going. All right, so this little mark on here, on, uh, on that uh, post right there, just a little pen mark, that was the height of this plant two days ago. It's already grown two inches or three inches. Same thing with this one. There's a little mark right there and look how much it's grown already. Tomatoes, okay, behind the tomato, there's the mark on the board. The tomato is already three inches taller than the, uh, the mark on the board. This one is just about an inch taller. That, that's um, cherry reds, so those take a little longer. This one back here, this is about an inch taller. But uh, yeah, everything is r really popping up here in the, uh, in the soils. And uh, in this one, I'm starting some, um, some citrus seeds. Uh, this would be tangelos. And these are tangelos I got from my friend Bill's house. And, uh, they, you know, they're male and female tangelos. The females have seeds, the males don't. So anyway, I get the seeds out of those. And then you have to uh, very carefully use a sharp knife and peel the outer um, casing off of the, uh, the seed, starting at the pointed end of the seed to get the inner part of the seed out of there. And then you put it in a container like this on a wet paper towel and give it a week or so and uh, then check it. And you should have some sprouting. You'll have a little root sprouting out of there. And give it a little bit longer than that and then you can transplant it into a pot and you'll get a tree to grow out of it. And it's very easy to propagate um, citrus seeds that way from just about any type of citrus plant. Now remember, if you put them in water, um, which is a good thing, if you can't get to them right away, save the seeds, put them into a, a small container of water and use good filtered water. Don't use tap water, it might have chlorine in there that'll harm the seed. But uh, you can put those in there and uh, if they come out and they feel a little slimy, they're not bad, okay? Just take a paper towel and clean the sliminess off of them and, and then peel that outer casing 
and then put them in here. I'll go over that whole process at another time. Right now, this is G-Bear. Remind you, give me a thumbs up down there. Don't forget to like my videos. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Subscriptions are free. Doesn't cost you anything. Click on the little bell icon and then you'll get notified when I upload a new video. This is G-Bear signing off.